And we're joined now by the former Conservative Cabinet Minister and Civil Liberties campaigner, David Davis. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What are your reservations about this idea? Well, let's say one thing first. I don't have many reservations about international use of passports. That's, that, I think, is, is OK. But domestically, uh, it would be completely contrary to the history and traditions of our country. We're a, we're a free country. We've never had to show papers to do uh, things in our country. A policeman can't stop you and ask you for the papers. Um, and what this is talking about is, as I think the... Um, uh, the behavioural uh, scientist uh, lady who was speaking to you uh, pointed out is an effective discrimination between different groups of people. Take take the best what? possible case okay. for such a passport. Somebody who's perhaps working in a care home um, with elderly vulnerable people. You'd think that's probably the best case possible to, uh, for, for, for a passport. Well, actually, you know, the individual concerned um, uh, may have good reasons. Maybe one of their relatives has, has, uh, has had a bad reaction to to the uh, to the uh, to the vaccine, or maybe they just don't believe in it, or maybe they've well, got religious reasons to object to it. You you know you couldn't take away from them the right to do their job in those circumstances, but, just as you can't take away from people the right to behave in a normal life, not well, just going to an essential uh, shop. Well, well, that's but the point, isn't normal it? Normal life. Let me let me pick you up on that. What about mm -hmm. in the territory that Greg Dyke is? talking about where you're not forcing people to have this if, to go into a supermarket or as you say to do their job but where it's a question of choice where if you want to go to a football match you want to stay in one of his hotels whatever it is then you can make a positive choice in that way it's not an essential thing it is a choice yeah but you are but you you're then creating two classes of society uh and you are saying to people uh, unless you're in this category, you can't enjoy theatre, you can't enjoy football, you can't enjoy whatever. And, and there are two so even scientific weaknesses in this. Number one, the vaccines work at probably 90% effectiveness, so you, you know, it's not perfect. But secondly, one of the things the government should be trying to achieve is what's known as herd immunity. That is, you get the levels of vaccination above about 80%, and... Uh, then actually the transmission rate drops away dramatically. And the right. protection given then to any individu individual by being vaccinated is quite small, but the protection to the, the whole is a lot. Now, that that seems to me, you know, uh, we, we're, inter we're talking about introducing something, a restriction on people's freedom, which will last for a long time. Once well, it's put well, in, it? it won't I mean, be abolished. You know, and yet it's only going to give you an advantage for perhaps a month or two. But once everybody is, or as many people as possible, are vaccinated, um, the need for this would disappear, wouldn't it? It's just a, a temporary yeah, yeah. just something that makes sense for a little while to ease the process of getting us back into a normal life. OK, OK, fine. In which case, uh, why not put the effort we're putting into worrying about this policy into accelerating the vaccination programme so we hit 80% by the middle of the summer? Well, it's going so pretty then well why anyway, do you need it? it? Then why do you need it? In that case, why do you need it? Why why actually put in place something? Governments are very, very good at putting in place measures which restrict people, very poor at taking them away afterwards. You know, we're going to have a whole suite of things we're going to need to remove from the statute book in the near future. Let's not add another one to it. Well, you really think that the government would be tempted to keep something like this in place for quite ulterior <laughs> you had you had Mr. Blair on earlier. There are thousands of items on the statute book which he put in place, which are wholly unnecessary now. But they've been there for 10, 20 years. Uh, yes, I do think they'd be slow about it. They won't bother about it. They'll think, consider it unimportant. So they'll just leave it there, just in case it might be useful another day. David Davis, thank you very much indeed for joining us.